I did pretty good in my packing. I forgot one thing and daddy was not very impressed. Hi and welcome back to my channel, The Organised Mum Lifestyle. So this is part two. So hopefully you've just watched part one. If not, it is up here. Click on it to see my packing and what I plan to pack and all my excitement before my holiday. And now we are back in New Zealand. It is August and it is cold. Okay, actually, it's not that bad. It's Auckland. It's probably about 12 degrees. It's a cold night tonight, dropping to five. And to be honest, as you will see from some of our videos and more videos to come out, we didn't have the best summer for weather, very British summer. We had some wonderful days and I'll share with you some of those sunny days, but I've also shared with you some of the more rainy days, particularly the steam train one. So in this video, I want to talk about what I didn't pack, what, I, what went wrong and a follow up from some of the points that I made in part one. So how did it go? I have to say I did pretty good. I did pretty good on my packing. I forgot one thing, one thing, and daddy was not very impressed. I packed his shaver, good on me, packed his shaver. I packed his charger. I forgot to pack any blades or guards. So it meant he had a shaver, but he was gonna really cut himself doing so and didn't have multiple different sizes. So daddy wasn't impressed. That's the only real thing I forgot. Uh, we just bought a travel one and actually it now means we've got two, which is great. Cute little travel kit, wasn't too expensive, problem solved. On the subject of the weather, I also didn't pack a cute little pair of boots that Tilly wears during the winter because I thought oh, it'll be summer. I packed a load of sandals, but I actually packed Monty's boots but didn't pack Tilly's. I don't know, I thought she had plenty of shoes. And actually with the weather being quite so wet and changeable I could have done with the boots we did have wellies gum boots whichever when we got there because my mum had bought some but these boots would have been quite nice as well so I kind of missed those and also because of the weather I didn't pack enough warm clothes but we bought loads of clothes anyway because we were planning on getting clothes in the UK anyway so I got extra jumpers for the kids extra coats so that really wasn't the end of the world as I thought I'd do in part one I packed too much I packed too much choice because daddy wasn't overly involved in the packing. I packed too many options for him. I think he had about six shirts, which he didn't need. I think I bought about four that he hadn't even worn. So it happens. I think for me, I didn't have enough of the winter clothes again, uh, long sleeve tops, that kind of thing, because I got excited because I thought it was going to be the summer. So how did I get on with a few other products? One of the ones were these. These were the reins that I mentioned in the first video. And I said I was going to use them at San Francisco Airport or where we went somewhere busy. And I have to say, the kids hated them. I hated them. The kids hated them. I don't know. I recommend them as a design and in theory. And if your kids like them, that's great. But no, no. I presented them to Tilly as we were coming off the plane, getting off at San Francisco. And she looked at me to say, what? I'm not wearing that and wiggled it off her hands the whole time. So that meant I didn't have the backup reins. Monty was just not impressed and he didn't even consider it, so I didn't use either of them. So they were a waste of money. We did get some more traditional reins. My parents got them actually, um, when they looked after the kids, uh, that have a harness along the front. Uh, they were pretty good. Tilly actually enjoyed them some of the time um, and she's used them before when she was a little bit younger, but maybe it was just the age of my kids. These plastic wallets were amazing. Oh look, I've still got something in it. They were amazing. We used these for the passports. I used them for the cables. They were absolutely brilliant. It meant you could look inside the bag and you could see straight away what you'd got. I'd highly recommend as many clear wallets as possible. Yes, they were also good for liquids because obviously you need them for liquids, um, but they were just so good for everything. The cables particularly, we used them the whole time. We kept them in there safe. The passports, we kept them all in there. Another thing we did, because we had so many bags, we had the barcoded stickers. We just stuck all the stickers onto the clear wallet with the passports. And actually we did lose the car seats at one point. When we were at San Francisco, there was no car seats. They got stuck in the oversize. So we used our barcodes to trace them. And I was just so glad I had everything in one place and all the barcodes attached in one place. So I highly recommend clear plastic wallets for everything. 
on the subject of car seats, I didn't mention our car seat bags. These are our car seat bags. They are pretty massive. And we use them to put the kids' car seats in, one each. And they've even got straps on the back of them. So we could actually wear them as rucksacks. And actually in the airport we did. We had so much stuff and the kids. Daddy and I put them on our backs. Uh, they were not comfortable. It was not ergonomic, I have to say. But they did the job. We could carry the car seats on our backs because they're an odd shape and they fall off the trolley. We've then got suitcases and then we had the kids on top of the trolley holding them all the time, my goodness, because they just refused to walk. We didn't have a, pu a push chair. We borrowed a push chair at the other end and didn't have a push chair at the airport, but that was okay because the kids could then go on the trolley and it meant we could get through the airport. Particularly when we came back, we had two trolleys, we had six bags and two car seats. So these were amazing. The other thing that's great about car seats is you can shove stuff inside, particularly coats and jumpers. I forgot this fact on the way home and I'd been so calculated in my packing that I kind of forgot and then I remembered and that meant Tilly could put some of her teddies in, some stuff which we were going to leave behind we could put in. I don't recommend anything obviously breakable and um, that's why it was great for clothing, coats, teddies, that kind of stuff and you can shove them in the gaps with the car seats. As I'm sure you picked up in my previous video, I fell in love with packing cubes packing cubes were amazing they continue to be amazing i didn't use them when i got there i did put things away in drawers in the kids bedroom i didn't have any drawers for our bedroom so we just lived out the suitcase and had things in piles they were quite handy for the stuff that we weren't using or we were saving for an event so the christening we were going to so i just kept them in there but generally i didn't use them until i repacked at the end but they were fantastic we actually had one suitcase explode on the way back the zip broke and it meant that it was just hanging together by one little bit but nothing fell out because the packing cubes were holding all the clothes in and particularly it was quite a big packing cube and it couldn't get through the gap so it actually saved us we should have got that wrapped we knew the suitcase was going to be bad but it was great because the packing cube saved us and we didn't lose anything the colouring in so in my previous video, I was super organised. I had colouring in books. I was all ready. We'd got colouring in books for different stages and sticker books. And mostly it was pretty positive. When we were at San Francisco Airport, the kids had a really good time doing stickers and colouring in. We set up a little camp. We had four hours there. It was really good and it worked really well. On the plane, less so. Just too fiddly, trying to get to the pens, trying to get to the colouring in. Monty's not overly into colouring in, Tilly is a little bit, she's still quite young but she is more interested. I did pick these up from Ikea when I was over there, I had full intentions of getting these because I'd seen these reviewed on a YouTube video. These are really cool. They are portable colouring in, so you can draw on the hard side, use it as a table and then inside you've got a pencil case, you've got an area to put all your books in, you've got an area to slide all your pens in. So I did get these, so on the way home we had them. Um, they are called Mala, again probably pronounced Ikea names wrong. Um, they were all over Ikea when I saw them in the UK. We don't have Ikea in New Zealand, we are apparently two years away from getting one in Auckland, so it was something I desperately wanted to get and to take back with us. So I've now got these for the kids and I would take them with me again but I probably wouldn't go to so much effort to have separate sticker books for each flight, that kind of stuff. But they were really good when we were in the airport as an alternative to the constant entertainment, which we were trying to do. Food. You saw me pack a lot of food. All divided, each for half of the flights, each for each leg. We could get them out of each. It just got complicated. The kids didn't eat half of the food. Equally, as I correctly guessed, they didn't eat much of the airline food either but it's because of the time we were flying. So we had dinner in the airport and then at 8 p.m. we took off for our flight. So actually on the first flight, we all actually slept quite a lot, five or six hours, it was great. So really eating wasn't really on the cars because it was the middle of the night. The next leg, we did four hours in San Francisco and we probably ate quite a few snacks there. So again, my snacks came out. We were able to buy food if we wanted to. I think I bought a muffin for the kids and then we also had our snacks. The next leg, Again, the kids slept quite well. I couldn't tell you what time of day it was. 
it was probably 16 hours after we left so again the kids slept quite well so we just ate a few snacks so I found myself still having bluey crackers and crackers into our holiday over the next few weeks on the way back I packed a lot less I did about half as much I again divided it all up the reason I did half as much is coming into New Zealand, biosecurity do not allow you to bring in leftover food or half open packets. So I knew whatever I brought, I would have to get rid of at the other end. So knowing that we didn't eat the four packs, I didn't have the privilege of saying, OK, I can use that later on because I'd, I'd lose it. So actually, I packed two bags. Ah, This time we took off at 2 p.m. We took off at 2 p.m. We were a little bit rushed at the airport. We didn't get a chance for a sit down lunch. We did have a little bit of lunch and that meant the kids were eating the snacks and often asking for the snacks. They were awake for the whole of the first flight, which was 11 hours. So they were snacking on our snacks. They were snacking on the airline food. They'd nearly eaten all of the food by the time we got to San Francisco after the first 11 hours. Ah, oh dear, maybe I've got this wrong. So we had a few of the snacks at San Francisco, but by that point, they were getting tired because they'd have been awake for 11 hours. They'd have been awake for the hours before, prior. I think the children had been awake for 22 hours, only having an hour's nap. They were asleep just as we were getting off the plane at San Francisco. I have to say the timing wasn't great for this flight. That meant we had four hours in San Francisco in the bright lights in the evening not quite dark it was dusk in san francisco we would landed at about 5 pm and they were awake we got on the next flight and the next flight was a night flight and this one was 13 hours all the way back to auckland thankfully it was a quiet flight and we had seven seats between the four of us which was fantastic and we all slept for about five or six hours on this flight so any of my worries about eating all the food meant that we had a little bit of food left for the second leg but they weren't going to eat it all because all of us were asleep and we were using it as a night flight we landed at 6 a.m in auckland and it left for a very tired day but at least we'd had a few hours the night before which officially was the night before so my advice is yes definitely pack snacks just check the country that you're arriving at whether there's biosecurity requirements on the food you're bringing in and that's australia and new zealand would have those considerations and other countries might do as well i know the uk don't so i brought the food in and i could continue to eat it also we bought a lot more back we bought six cases back we paid for two extra i bought four pairs of shoes four pairs of shoes and quite a few outfits for the kids i enjoy getting the outfits from the uk because they're different and sometimes they're a lot cheaper we got quite a few things as well as some things we brought back from our childhood which we enjoyed and our family have given us as well so with that we ended up bringing a lot more back however i did gut the hand luggage quite a lot we had those neck pillows remember those neck pillows that you'd often use and i carried them all the way there none of us used them and I've often done this before, even before the kids, and said, are we actually going to use them? Because you get given pillows on the plane. So we left them behind. We donated them. So that was a lot less to carry. We just brought the hand luggage right down to what might we need if we lost the cases, what might we need? If the children need changes of clothes or they get ill or they don't like the food, what are we going to need? So we really brought the hang luggage down. A lot of the toys that we took for the flight, we only used when we were in the transit in San Francisco. We had a few toys out, but generally we didn't. It was just entertainment on the iPads, entertainment on the screens, a couple of games on the screens, a couple of books we read on the plane, some teddies that Tilly used. But generally it wasn't a case of getting all the toys out because it just wasn't the space. Thank you for watching. I hope you found these two videos useful. I do hope you've watched part one, as part two is not going to make any sense. If you've sat through this and you've not watched part one, go and watch part one. I've got lots of videos coming up from our UK trip. I'm editing them at the moment, so over the next few weeks you'll see more and more. I'm really pleased that the packing went well. I'm happy with my organisation. I've learnt some things and I've enjoyed sharing them with you. I post every Friday, so hit subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.